So, um, hi. Good vibes. Good Africa Bitcoin conference <coughs> vibes. Um, so we've heard, yeah, you feel them. Um, we've heard some great things about Bitcoin in the last couple days. Um, the value of Bitcoin in society, the way humanitarians are using Bitcoin to solve very important problems. How unfortunate that the um, work of securing and operating the network is boiling the oceans and destroying the planet and scorching the earth. No, not really. Um, today we're going to talk about Bitcoin mining, energy consumption, and specifically we're going to tackle the thorny question of whether energy consumption in Bitcoin mining is justified. And we'll also talk about some of the um, energy and mining developments in Africa that are being um, spearheaded by people such as my esteemed people here, panelists. Um, my name is Julie Landrum. I work at OpenNode. We are a Bitcoin and Lightning Network payment processor. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to these guys to introduce themselves, and we'll get started with the, with the meat of the issue. Ah, yes. I am Sébastien Gouspillou. I am the CEO of Big Block Green Services, and I, I do mining for six years now. And we start to do mining in Congo three years ago. So we are starting... Uh, to, to do mining uh, everywhere in Africa. We are in contact with seven countries and we hope to, to develop the part of the African mining. Uh, this part is very small at the moment. We, we have to increase it. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Janet Maingi. Um, Janet Maingi, I work for Gridless Inc. I'm the Chief Operations Officer. Um, we've been mining in Africa uh, for just short of a year now, um, and our focus is more on the rural part of rural communities in Africa. Um, and I guess we'll discuss further as we continue. Thank you. And my name is David. Um, I'm a co-founder of Solarly. Uh, it's a company who installs solar stations in uh, rural areas without access to electricity in the household. And so I work in the energy sector since um, now eight years. So yeah, we are going to speak about mining and energy consumption. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to suggest that we start at the beginning. Let's just really quickly um, talk about why Bitcoin mining consumes energy. Do it, David. No, no. Go. Oh. Go. No, no, um, so the question is why? Why does Bitcoin mining consume energy? Can you? Pourquoi le Bitcoin mining? Uh, yeah, okay. So um, to have a secure um, network, uh, Bitcoin consume energy. Um, it's the difference. It's a proof of work. It's the difference with other cheat kind thing. Um, it's very important for Bitcoin, but we can discuss about it, but it's important for Bitcoin to consume energy. Um, and in, the, in this sector, the actors and the, miners, the minor actors are going to be attracted with the lowest price of megawatts. So um, in the first time, it's very important to consume energy, but it's very important also to consume um, not useful energy for local people. So maybe, Sebastian, you can explain why uh, it's important to mine in the excess of renewable energy. For me, the question is uh, uh, why it is a question. Consume electricity is not a crime. so. Yeah. It's Bitcoin consumers energy. It's not a failure. It's not a bug. It's a, it, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's a feature. It's it's normal. We don't have to think about why why we use energy. Is it possible to to avoid it and to to adopt the proof of stake? It's it's stupid. 
uh, we take energy and we take essentially lost energy. So <laughs> for me, it's crazy to imagine there's a problem with energy and Bitcoin. So there's not. Nowhere. Cool. Janet, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the energy landscape in Africa and some of the work that Gridless is doing. Um, sure. Um, but before I go there, I would just want to add to what uh, Sebastian has said. Um, the focus of Bitcoin and energy, um, I think, is also a fad because the first thing I think of is if you go back to history, when God created the world, what did he say? Let there be light. <laughs> light is a form of energy. So energy is something that we use every day, uh, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's in our homes, whether it's in our companies. But I think the more important discussion should be how do we conserve this energy? Because that's a bigger problem. It's not about using the energy. Energy will be used in our daily operations, whether it's Bitcoin and all the other areas. So the focus should really be more about how do we conserve this energy more than why are we using this energy. Um, and then moving to your second part of the question. Um, as I mentioned earlier, gridless, um, has been mining um, in East Africa. And of course, we're looking to expand it to other parts of Africa. Our focus is basically running, uh, building, designing, uh, and operating uh, mining sites um, around renewable, small-scale uh, mini-grids, which are then are used by rural communities in Africa. Um, so if you look at the current terrain, and I'll, I'll speak from where I come from, um, of course, we have the main grid that provides power, but it doesn't cover everybody in the entire population in um, Kenya. And I think there's been a lot of research that talks about there's only 40, at least 43% of the population in Africa is still not powered up. And so the question really is how do we then um, mitigate this gap? And from our perspective as gridless, we came in and realized that there is a lot of energy generated in Africa, especially renewable energy. The problem is really more of um, where does this energy go to? So the energy is available, but there's nowhere for it to be sold. There's a lot of energy that is, you know, whether it's hydro or solar that's been generated, but is not econo uh, economized because there is nowhere to take it to. So as gridless, we're bridging that gap where we're absorbing this energy. And by absorbing this energy, we are then able to economize these uh, uh, grids. And while at it, then the grids are then impacting the rural communities in East Africa and, of course, into the larger of Africa. Amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Seb, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, your mining operations in Africa and maybe tell us a little bit about the Virunga Park project? Uh, so we start to, to do mining three years ago in Congo, close to the Virunga Park. The project. Uh, from the Virunga Park was to create uh, new plants in view to give electricity to people because of the deforestation. In, this, in, in the Kivu, in the east of Congo, uh, everybody used uh, the, the trees to make coal, and we use coal to, to boil the water, to cook. Uh, and the project is to change the, the energy uh, because to, to, to make this coal, we need to cut the trees in the forest. So the, the, the deforestation was um, huge. And the project of the boss of the park is to, to give this new energy, so the electricity. And it works. But when you build the, 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 the plant, before, um, before you, you, you find the clients, before you, you, you pull the lines, the, the power lines, the power network, it can take two years, five years, ten years, and during this time, mining is very, very important uh, to, 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 to give profitability to the, to the project. And this kind of project, the, the small plants in Africa, we need to build a lot of. Uh, I don't know if you, if you know the SDG 7. The SDG 7 is the Sustainable Development Goal number seven of the United Nations. This, this uh, goal is to give access to all, every people uh, in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, by 2030. If you want to do it, the countries uh, have to, uh, to connect people 
80 million people every year. 80 million people every year. So it's not easy, it's a, it's a big work, and um, the mining can help all these projects, giving money since the first day of the, of the opening of the plant, and it's really new. And when we, when we explain it to the governments, to different, different states, uh, they understand that this new client, the mining, is a real opportunity for the development of electricity in Africa. And it's it really convincing, yeah, because we have the possibility to come on the plants without uh, infrastructure, without internet, without roads and airport and ports and all. And we can have a big industrial uh, consumption of electricity without nothing. Uh, we, we can do it everywhere, in the jungle, in the mountain, in the desert. So it's, it's really a new opportunity for the electricity companies, the small ones. Um, they are alone in the countries to, to, to make the m miracle of electricity. And uh, they need the, the mining client. It, it, it's sure now. It's very, very important for the development of electricity. So now the mining in the world uh, gives $4 billion every year to the electricity market. And what is the part of this uh, financial, um, uh, this, this big financial help? for Africa. It's maybe one million dollars, less than one million dollars. And so the miners spend four billion dollars everywhere, but not in Africa. And it's not normal because it's in Africa that we need the mining to buy the excess of electricity. Amazing. And um, I guess a, a final point on that is um, to clarify that the, the mining operations that you are putting in place for these um, new plants, these new energy plants, are actually quite mobile, so they can be moved once the period of in initial investment or initial uh, economic need um, has been met? Yeah, the mining must be, um, um, uh, uh, we, we must move the mining when we don't, the mining must be useful for the electricity company and for the people. So when the electricity company does not need the mining anymore, we stop because we, we buy the electricity very cheap. So as soon as we are in competition with the normal Excellent. use of electricity, we disappear. And we are in containers in view to be uh, mobile and in view to, to go on another plant to buy the excess electricity. Amazing. That's good. Thank you. It's really good. So um, we've talked a little bit about the, the generation of new electricity and the use of excess electricity during times of, um, of, uh, of that initial phase to benefit from mining. Um, David, do you want to talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in the renewable space uh, with Solarly? So me, the... Um the company that I have is not a mining company. Uh, the core business of uh, Solarly is just to um, make it easier the access for electricity for people without access to them, to it. Um, it's not possible to integrate miners in our uh, business because the, produ the production of energy is too small to integrate ASICs on it. Um, but we are working on mini grids that you already spoke, and uh, in the mini grid you can imagine to implement some miners on it. And uh, you know wh when you make wh when you mine, like you you take a risk, and if you take a risk, there is uh, a more value on it. And so it's important to have like big, um, big uh, middle and big farm in the renewable energy than BBGS. But maybe we can also imagine some. Uh, decentralization of mini mini grid and and mining inside to make an equilibrium on it. Um, but for the moment, it's difficult to integrate mining in the mini, mini grids uh, inside the, uh, a village. So, yeah, work in progress. Awesome. 
Um, Janet, did you want to add anything from a mining perspective, specifically in terms of the plans that you guys have or any successes, early successes that you're seeing? Um, yes. I mean, um, of course, the discussion being around Bitcoin mining and climate change, um, and I think we're all talking about renewable energy. So it becomes very clear that um, we are approaching the Bitcoin mining from a different angle, where we're actually gr uh, continuing to grow the green footprint. And therefore, um, some of these arguments of where um, Bitcoin mining is going to boil the ocean, it would be interesting because I was reading a, a paper by, uh, I think, Darin, who, was, um, who mentioned that only 0.16% of the total world energy is used by Bitcoin. So 0.16% is what we're using to boil the ocean. Then I'm just concerned what the 99.84 is boiling or erupting mm -hmm. to the other side of the world. And therefore, it's quite exciting for us because with a focus on renewable energy, it's not just about growing the green footprint, but it's looking at the bigger picture where with this kind of an initiative, we're going to be able to impact more communities in rural Africa who've not been able to access uh, electricity. And I'm sure you'd all appreciate in today's life, um, electricity is really a basic need. It's no longer a luxury. So by being able to support the partnering with the uh, mini grids, uh, being able to buy the stranded power that they have, which means we are giving them a new revenue stream, then we assume that they'd be able to use the same revenue stream to either um, expand their distribution to more homes in rural Africa, and by the same time, they're also able to make sure that their projects are economically viable. Amazing. Um, so I think the, the conversation around mining has been fascinating and, and has been fascinating for me, specifically just as someone who's a little bit further removed from, from that actual um, process. But what seems to me incredible is that where I always focused on Bitcoin as something that would um, lay a new monetary foundation for the world. I think what you guys are working on is so compelling because before we, you know, supercharge a monetary revolution, you guys are helping to find the incentives and to solve the problems so that we can generate more energy um, and specifically in Africa. So how do you envision the next few years? And I guess, what connection do you see between um, you know, putting miners in, in Africa, to then produce the money that we are hoping will also benefit the continent? So me? Sure, take it. <laughs> Comment je vois le futur euh, yeah. à court terme yeah. Comment ça évolue uh, for, for me, the, in the next few, few years, we, we can see some mining on every new plant. So now we, we identify between five and 600 megawatts available in Africa, in seven countries, only in, in seven countries. So you have the possibility to to, to make mining in many, many places in Africa. Uh, the, the difficulty we have is to, to raise money to make mining in Africa. It's incredible to see that the big uh, American companies are in capacity to, to raise uh, two, three, four billion dollars for the operation in Texas, where we don't need uh, mining especially. Here in Africa, we especially need mining in view to to increase the, the offer of electricity. And we don't find enough uh, investors. So I can see, and I give congratulations to, uh, to uh, Gridle Gridless. We just, uh, we just launched $2 million from Jack and the block company. It's incredible. <laughs> very good job, guys. Very good job, Janet. And I hope it's opening the way for the investors to, to come and to invest in mining in this uh, continent because it's the most useful mining we can do. Yeah. And it's profitable exactly as it's profitable in Texas. So it's, my future is this one. Uh, maybe 20 or 30% of the 
uh, of the mining will be in, in Africa. It's logic. Amazing. The mining must be useful. So now it's very useful in Africa. Guys, you wanna? Is it okay? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, yes, with, the, with the, the round that we've managed to close, we were, we were quite excited and it was a perfect timing uh, because one, of course, we also, we, we've been talking to partners who are very excited about this uh, concept and I'm sure they'll be excited to know that now we can uh, continue uh, powering up um, rural communities in Kenya. But beyond that, it was also perfectly time, a perfect timing um, a, a close of the round because, um, as you know, the market is very... Um, it's a, we're going through the bear market and equipment is quite uh, affordable. The miners are quite affordable now. So this is the right time for us to be able to get the miners and just keep on uh, plugging them into this uh, stranded power within um, East Africa and hoping that within that process then again we get rural communities powered up. And we also increase the Bitcoin footprint uh, in Africa. So this is quite some exciting times coming ahead. It um, reminds me of something that Obi said earlier, which is um, Bitcoin needs Africa to succeed. Yeah. And, um, and hopefully Bitcoin can help Africa succeed. In terms of mining, it's very important, yes, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is important for Africa, but Africa is important for the Bitcoin mining in terms of decentralization. Now we have 50% of the mining in America. It's crazy. It's very dangerous, you know? So we need absolutely to, to decentralize the, the mining and to, to, to open many farms in, in Africa, yes. It's very important for the Bitcoin network. It's very, it's very, um, um, it's very funny because you, you, we can see that with mining, we are going to see like uh, developing countries in African continent or South American and Central American are going to be a major actor of the new monetary system if Bitcoin succeed. And like it's the best incentive uh, to develop the social improvements in the land. And it's like the first time in history that um, this kind of country can really be part of a monetary revolution. And uh, very exciting to see what happened in 10, 20 years. So, um, the work that you guys are doing, like, not only is it um, not destructive, not only is Bitcoin mining not destructive, it's one of the most benevolent forces and constructive um, activities that we can undertake. How, um, what's the best way to rise above the, um, the detractors and the lies and the noise? Like, what's the best way to do that? De, de, de contrer le, la, le malhonnête, les critiques ah. malhonnêtes. We have to build and to show that the mining is, is nice for population, can help the, this kind of projects. And we have so many projects in Africa, very, uh, very important for the, for the development and the social development. We just have to build and, and, and to show it to, to people. We can talk and talk and talk again. If people want to say Bitcoin is not good, Bitcoin is polluting, yeah. uh, let's continue to, to think about. Yeah. We, we don't care about it. We, we have to continue to build. And more we build, more we convince people close to the project that Bitcoin is useful. You know, I, I, I was in Oman 10 days ago. I explained to the government how Bitcoin is useful for them to buy the success of electricity they have. And so at the beginning, they don't like Bitcoin because it's the uh, state, the government. They, they think uh, Bitcoin is an enemy of, of state. Bitcoin is not the enemy of the states. Bitcoin is the enemy of the bad states. The states, <laughs> whose states uh, that don't want, that, that, that they don't want to give more, more, more freedom to people. It's not all states, I hope so. Yeah. 100%. And do you want to talk about um, anything that you're doing specifically to, once you've built these use cases, 
how, how are you trying to tell the story, trying to tell the story more broadly? Qu'est-ce que tu fais pour, euh, pour démontrer aux gens euh, les avantages de, de ça? Tu m'avais dit, tu, tu fais un film, tu... tu... Ah, yes, we, we can have communication. So we have some uh, producer making a, a movie. We, we have the project to, with a movie on Netflix. But uh, it's not my, my goal. My goal is really to, to build, to convince the, the people who decide. So the, the, the boss of the electricity companies, the minister of energy in different countries, it's important to, to convince them Forget Bitcoin. Only think we are in capacity to buy your electricity. And you have too much electricity at the moment at this place and not enough electricity at the other place. You, have, you need money to, to, to pull the lines one more time. And so it, it's easy. Uh, when, when we have the possibility to talk directly with this kind of people, the people who decide, I am convincing. Yeah. yeah. Because we talk about big money. You're, con you're a convincing guy, yeah. Sam. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Anything to add to that? Like, what yeah, you I think the, the, the proof of work that you do is right. the most important to right. prove with uh, something real that uh, it's a work and it's, uh, it's going to give less possibility to ma mainstream media to tell some bullshit. Um, but there is also another way, it's the education pr process. It's very important to link the two because proof of work, it's okay, but people are not going to see it. Uh, if there is no documentary or if there is there is no information, so yeah. For example, uh, I'm in the the team of Découvre Bitcoin is the open uh, open source university of Bitcoin, and uh, it's important to go to the field and to explain to students, to explain to local business what happened really with mining, uh, and so to give them also the the good answers uh, when there are some bullshit informations. So I think. We need to link the access to information, the education process, and the proof of work uh, in, in the field. I think it's, yeah, it's important to mix the two. Awesome. Um, beyond the proof of work, so there are also okay. uh, Beyond the proof of concept, um, I think the other thing we're excited about is the formation of uh, GAMA, which is the Green Africa Mining Alliance. And basically, this is an umbrella which brings together uh, miners in Africa, and we believe by working together we'll be able to share synergies, share experiences, be able to have a better negotiating position um, when it comes to Bitcoin miners in Africa. So again, that's another exciting thing that we believe is going to start the movement of moving the Bitcoin mining experience into Africa. Amazing. So I think two things that I've taken away from spending time with you guys in the last couple of days and learning about what you're doing is... Um, Bitcoin mining is actually spurring and justifying, economically justifying energy production in Africa, number one. Number two, it's helping counter environmental disasters like deforestation, uh, the burning of coal, so like you know, negating the health effects of these poor sources of energy. That's on the one side. And I guess on the other side, what's super fascinating is that it's so economically rational to embrace mining at this stage of energy development in Africa that it seems like it'll act a bit like a Trojan horse for, for ushering in the new monetary system that comes right behind the production of, of money, of the best money that we've all ever seen. Is there anything else that you guys want to, um, want to add? If not, like we have some time, we could probably take some questions. Or we could give some time back. We could be like the first panel to like give time back. <laughs> Do you want to add anything else? Yeah. I, I think the African mining must be a subject for African people. So I am a white guy from France, from Paris. Uh, I, I'm just there <clears throat> in Africa to connect uh, our experience to the, to the new African miners. So uh, there is Nemo. Uh, from Ethiopia, he has, he, he has a project. We are, in all countries, we have a, a, a local partner because uh, it's your business to create the, to create the machine. How to, to source the machine, to, 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 to find the sourcing. 
but uh, in general, the business must be managed by the local people. Uh, it's not a, a new col colonialism, the, the Bitcoin. Uh, it's a question of freedom and of independence. So every people who, 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 are, who has a project of mining, it's your responsibility to have the appointment with the electricity companies and to find the megawatts, the kilowatts, and if we can help, we are very happy to help. It's totally free. You can contact us and we give the advices to, to uh, Gridless, for example. So my advice is to contact Gridless uh, <laughs> to make mining in Africa. It's normal. <laughs> So with Gamma, yes, we're, we're quite excited that we'll be able to support uh, both the vertical growth of Bit, uh, Bitcoin mining, as well as anyone who is willing and ready to uh, mine from even a, a small scale perspective. Um, if you want to reach us, you can go to gamma.africa and I'm sure we'll be responsive and see how best to collaborate and be part of this movement in Africa. Thank you. Um. Oh. Um, just to say that, like, what Sebastian does, uh, I don't really know what the installation that you have, but I know what you have uh, in, in image. Uh, it's very inspiring, like, when you imagine that you can just put some miners in uh, containers, uh, mine in the excess of energy, put, like, uh, improvement in society, and take the container and go in another place, do the same, take the container and do the same, and the same, and the same. It's uh, very inspiring to see that the mining could really go where it's needed. And uh, yeah, it's a very big incentive for African continent. So let's do it. So I guess just a last thank you to you guys for the work that you're doing to highlight the value of, um, of Bitcoin, but to, to be doing so in a way that um, benefits um, Africa and benefits energy production and benefits freedom. So thank you. You guys are great. We have some time. I don't know if there's like microphones or people. Do we have around. any questions? Just so we know. So that's one, two. So energy. Um, prior to um, speculatively speaking, we know there's going to be an energy crisis coming, looking at all that is happening around the world. In Ghana, we have different power purchasing agreements, and they have all sorts of technologies for a pay or take pay and take all of that. But what it essentially means is that the government has secured power purchasing that it does not need. And so it's, it doesn't know what to do with the excess power that it is generating. Um, if there are people around here, especially those that interact with governments, um, what can they do to approach government and say, oh, we know you have this capacity setting which you probably only export. How about we channel it into Bitcoin money? You know you want to create your own CBDCs. These Bitcoins can back your CBDCs and then give you a stable monetary system. How do we navigate this way? I'm donating Sebastian to respond to that one. <laughs> okay. How do they identify the people who talk about when there is a surplus of energy that is, in fact, belongs to the government? Uh, you, you have to ask to the, <laughs> to the national uh, electricity company. Uh, in general, the, the guys, the, the electricians, don't like to explain they have too much electricity. Uh, so we have to ask many times, you're sure you have not too much electricity? And if they are honest and if, if they want to, to, to make money, so <laughs> they finish to explain, yes, okay, we have a, a, a small surplus. A small extra capacity. We, we, you, you, we have to ask. Every day we ask to the electricity companies, do you have some excess? And we, we, we find it finally. Because it's everywhere. You know, on the, on the very good, very well connected network, 
you have always excess electricity because the network is built to, to answer to the peaks. But the peaks of demand, it's maybe 20% or 15% of the time. The rest of the time, you have too much electricity. So it's why in Texas, for example, you have big mining and uh, they can cut the electricity route during the peaks and the rest of the time they are very useful on the network. So you have different sort of mining. But here I know uh, there is a, a permanent excess of electricity during some, some years, yeah. And when you create a new plant, you have, also, you have to the, the risk. Uh, you don't have the permit at, at the right moment when you open the plant. Maybe you don't have the permits from the authorities to sell your, your electricity on the grid. So you are very happy to have a, a miner at this moment. So it's different. In different countries, it's, it's not the same approach. Uh, it, it's a big work huh, to find these extra capacities. But uh, you can do it because I'm sure there are extra capacities everywhere in Africa. Or permanent or just during the period uh, without peaks. Is it clear? OK, is that OK? All right, awesome. Last question. Thank you for a great discussion. Um, we've seen El Salvador take a very sort of proactive state level approach to mining and they're produ planning on doing their volcano bonds, etc. Do we think we might see something similar um, with an African state or government taking a very direct uh, investment approach to mining in the next few years? Um, yeah, the, the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to explain. Like, um, we, some, some months ago, the car, so in Central African Republic, wanted to make like, Bitcoin as legal tender. And uh, Sebastian uh, put in place a group that we went uh, to work with the president and the government. And we make a document uh, that we send to them. And uh, we, we propose them to make the same plan than in El Salvador, because it's a proof of concept. It's, it's working. And uh, it's not already launched, but it's maybe more, more useful than the single coin. And uh, we send the document. They, don't, they didn't read it, um, I think. And uh, they take the decision to launch Sangokoin. So yeah, we need to explain that we just need Bitcoin. Like States have to be focused on the money. That's it. The rest, it's uh, for the private sectors. And uh, they need to just use Bitcoin protocol to, for, that the example in El Salvador, to make Bitcoin bond, for example. Um, we don't need another state shitcoin or something like that. It's a very good question because the, the biggest uh, electricity companies are the national ones. So, it's, yes, it's a very good question. I don't have the, the, uh, the full answer. I don't know. I know the, in France, for example, we can't do mining without the, the authorities. It's why we don't have Bitcoin mining in France, because the electricity is expensive. And maybe the only possibility is to work with EDF, the national company. They can, they can, find, uh, uh, they can find electricity to, to, do, to do mining. But in El Salvador, it's different. You have uh, maybe 60% of the electricity produced by private companies. So the government can have a policy about mining, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a job for the, for the electricity companies one more time. So it can be private or it can be national. But when it's national and the, the, the country is not friendly with Bitcoin, it's sure that there's no mining. We can see it in France, for example. Yeah. But similarly, if it's, it's government-run energy companies, um, it still has to be rational from an economic standpoint to do it. In which case, it could make sense for them to um, get on board. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank uh, you. A round of applause for our panelists, ladies and gentlemen, as they leave the stage.
Vamos.